name is Iris Franz and today we're going to talk about one of the non-tariff trade barriers which is import quota. So by now I hope you have watched my video about import tariff because import quota, at least graphically, is very similar to import tariff with only a minor difference. However, I want you to remember that import quota is more restrictive than import tariff because import tariff is about money. You can import as much as you want, as long as you pay the government the tariff. But import quota is much more restrictive because the government actually jumps in to tell you, hey, you can only import so and so amount. So this is our graph. That's the domestic demand and domestic supply curve. And without quota restrictions, suppose the world supply is perfectly elastic and PW is your world price. So you can see given that price, your quantity demanded is QD1 and domestic quantity supply is QS1. So the difference will be the imports without quota restriction. And our consumer surplus will be this big triangle without quota restriction. Now suppose the government is going to impose an import quota saying you cannot import more than this amount, say M2. So you're going to find the distance between your domestic demand curve and domestic supply curve that gives you exactly M2. And then you're going to look. Now, QD2 tells you the domestic quantity demanded, and QS2 tells you the domestic quantity supplied with the quota restriction. So given that quantity demanded and quantity supplied, you can see our price has gone up from PW to PW plus T. And our consumer surplus will go down from that big triangle to a smaller triangle and we can cut the lost consumer surplus into four pieces A, B, C and D and you can see A is redistributive effect that is being redistributed from consumer surplus to producer surplus and we also have area D that's consumption effect that's the area of consumer surplus that's lost due to the import quota. So previously, suppose your willingness to pay is that. And previously, the price was PW. So you will buy one product and get some consumer surplus. But now, because of the import quota, the price has gone up from PW to PW plus T. And therefore, you don't buy a product anymore because your willingness to pay is lower than the current price. So consumption effect is the consumer surplus that's lost because of import quota. And protective effect is area B. It's very similar to before. We are replacing the efficient foreign producer with inefficient domestic producer. So suppose that's your cost, your domestic producer, and without quota restriction, the price was PW. So you look at the price that's lower than your cost, so you choose not to produce it. But now, with quota restriction, price has gone up to PW plus T. And your cost is lower than that, so you choose to produce. And we're replacing the more efficient foreign producer with inefficient domestic producer. So that's that we loss. So protective effect and consumption effect together, they are that we loss. So nobody gets that piece of pie, it's just a waste of resources. And finally, you can see the only difference really is quota rent. Area C previously was revenue effect, but now it's called quota rent. And who gets the quota rent? That depends on the situation. And to make the case more concrete, I'm going to assume that this is the cheese market. So we are the um, US and we're trying to import um, cheese from European unions. So we have three players here. We have the domestic government, we have the European cheese producers, they're trying to sell their cheese to the US, and we have also a domestic importers, that's our grocers. So think about grocers like HEB, like Safeway, like Kroger, and we'll import the cheese from the European Union. Now suppose the government auctions off the import license saying that, hey, you can import but you have to buy license from me, and the highest bidder will win the license. Then in that case, the domestic government is going to get the quota rent. And um, the second case is this. Suppose the government doesn't do anything and let the market run itself. 
and at the same time domestic importers, the grocers, they collude together as a monopsony, as an only buyer, whereas the European cheese producers, they compete against each other, trying to sell to um, domestic importers, to the U.S. grocers. Then in that case, you can imagine the U.S. grocers are going to get a quota rent. They're going to buy the cheese at $2 per turnaround to the U.S. consumers and sell the cheese at $3 in this case. So in that case, the um, domestic importers, the grocers are going to get the quota rate. And uh, um, the third case is this. If the foreign producer, they collude together, so the European cheese producers, they collude together as a monopoly. And the U.S. grocers, they compete against each other trying to buy this cheese. In that case, the foreign producers, the European producers, are going to get the quota rent. They're going to sell the cheese to the U.S. importers at $3. So um, the foreign producers, the European cheese makers, they're going to get all the quota rent. So you can see the only difference um, is the quota rent. And I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.